My name is Sam Vaknin and I am a columnist in Brussels Morning. And today we are going to discuss a tiny country with a vanishing economy, China. <laughs> when COVID-19 struck, China's exports plummeted by 17.2% in January, February 2020. In July 2023, exports fell off a cliff down by 14.5% on the heels of a 12% year-on-year drop in June and an almost uninterrupted string of similarly dismal figures since October 2022. Exports to China's biggest destination, the United States of America, dropped by a whopping 23%. Unimaginable only a few weeks ago. And this shocked everyone. China has removed its pandemic-related growth stifling measures at the end of 2022. Everyone predicted an explosion in terms of um, economic activity. Inflation and looming recessions in China's target markets, coupled with a tripling of benchmark interest rates within one year, have all conspired to take a bite out of China's only path to prosperity exports. Imports shrank by 12.4% in July as orders for Chinese finished goods dried up and domestic demand declined sharply. All told, China's growth rate was a measly and unprecedented 0.8% in the second quarter of 2023. Youth unemployment hit 20%. The property sector is teetering on the verge of a meltdown, with housing projects uncompleted and mortgage strikes. The Chinese lead leadership is convulsing. Rapid-fire interest rate cuts by the central bank follow on the heels of delirious stimulus plans released frantically by China's state council. Growth is projected to be an increasingly unlikely 5% this year, and even this is a disenchanting figure. There is very little room for stimulus spending or tax cuts in the wake of the massive public outlays during the pandemic. And this is not a new problem. Over the past 15 years or so, mounting sovereign debt crisis in Europe and an anemic rebound in America's economy were more than offset by the emergence of Asia and in particular China and India, as a global powerhouse. And yet, the warning signs were all there. China's economic miracle has long been based on an artificial rate of exchange for its currency, the Yuan, Renminbi. The miracle was based on, an unsustainable, on unsustainable dollops of government largesse and monetary quantitative easing which led to the emergence of asset bubbles, mainly in real estate, and to pernicious inflation. And frankly, a lot of the miracle was heavily reducted statistics. Real wages have been declining in China for quite a few years now, as rural folk moved to bargaining cities. Bed loans proliferated and consumption remained subdued as savings rates reached malignant self-defeating levels. In an effort to sanitize humongous export proceeds, China amassed trillions of dollars worth of foreign exchange reserves, mostly invested in American treasury bonds. And this created a dangerous exposure to the vicissitudes of the increasingly more decrepit US dollar and to America's downgraded sovereign credit rating, most recently again. The Chinese authorities' attempts to clamp down on rampant speculation and price gouging, these attempts are too little, too late, not to say irrelevant. The economy will screech to a shuddering halt in the mother of all hard lendings. The Chinese house of cards and hall of mirrors will collapse ominously, ominously and swiftly and soon. And this will bring the entire global economic edifice 
into disarray with mounting imbalances and increased risk aversion among investors. The second phase of this oncoming global crisis will resemble closely the Great Depression, with massive write-offs in the values of equities, across the board crumbling of entire banking systems and mounting two-digit and unemployment rates everywhere. How to reconcile this doomsday prognosis with China's uninterrupted string of decades of stellar, often two-digit, annual growth figures? By seeing China for what it is, the world's greatest ever Ponzi scheme. Behind the hype, the spin, the propaganda, and outright confabulations, not to say lies, China's economic miracle is founded in its entirety on a simple premise, a breathtakingly audacious prestidigitation, a large, equal to two-fifths of GDP, and steadily soaring balance of payments, current account, a surplus, mainly with the USA, its addict partner in this dance macabre. And this current account surplus, or balance of payment surplus, serves to disguise and directly underwrite the fitted outcomes of an all-pervasive state. These outcomes include a mountain of rotting credits in the state-owned banks and local government, neglected sectors of the lopsided economy, and egregiously misallocated economic resources, mainly in the construction and retail, retail sectors, and via huge stimulus packages. In many countries, government spending translates into GDP growth. But China is a special case. <laughs> Most of the seemingly inexorable mushrooming of its GDP had been faked this way in 2007-2009, for example. Indeed, it is China's very dependence on a wary and wary United States consumer which spells its doom when the American music stops. Once the American music stops, China's investment-driven economy will revert to crippling overinvestment, overcapacity, hidden unemployment, and underemployment. In one word, history is worse deflation, or worse yet, stagflation. We've seen it all before, this is nothing new. It happened in Japan. The only difference being that Japan had a real and thriving private sector, while China doesn't. China's private sector, albeit officially accounting for three-fourths of its GDP, is mostly foreign-owned, export-oriented or immersed in non-productive operations, in other words, speculation. Large swaths of China's economy, including and especially the mission-critical financial sector, are in the incompetent and venal hands of China's decidedly uncivil uh, service. They are managed, or mismanaged rather, by bumbling and prov provincial party apparatchiks and hacks. To this toxic brew, one should add a devastated environment, a dysfunctional judicial system, and I'm being charitable, shoddy accounting practices, including by Western multinationals, stunted capital markets, an obliterated countryside and dying agriculture, and a demographic time bomb. Owing to the one-child policy, China's population is aging faster than any other major countries. This is not to mention political risk in an age of Facebook-driven, tweeted revolutions. Hong Kong may have been just the harbinger of things to come.